Hello everybody, ich bin Maya Tanova, Teil von Lucify Schriftstellerinnen Kollektiv. Das Kollektiv ist während der Corona-Zeit entstanden, damit wir unsere Kreativität durch Schreiben versucht haben zu verstärken. Und in der Zwischenzeit ist dieses Kollektiv ein sehr wichtiges Netzwerk von Schriftstellerinnen mit Migrationshintergrund in der Schweiz geworden. Zusammen mit meiner Kolleginnen Anna Butan aus Russland und äh, Zahir al Yamus aus Syrien werden wir jeden Montag äh, Teil von unseren Schreiben äh, vorlesen. Diese äh, Vorlesung ist äh, eigentlich äh, eine Promotion über unseren äh, Auftritt, unseren literarischen Matinee äh, im Rahmen von Thuner Literaturfestivals Literare. Der Matinee findet am 30. Mai um 11 Uhr im Rathaus in Thun statt und wird von Tabea Steiner moderiert. Ihr seid alle herzlich eingeladen, an diesem Matinee uns zu besuchen, das Schreiben zu genießen und alle zusätzlichen Infos könnt ihr auf www.literare.ch finden. Und jetzt als Vorgeschmack vom Matinee am 30. Mai in Thun werde ich einen Teil von meinem letzten Roman Der verlorene Spiegel der Seele vorlesen. Es ist ein historisches Roman über eine erleuchtete, starke Frau aus Mittelalter. Da ich hier auf Facebook ein internationales Publikum habe, habe ich mich für Englisch entschieden. Hoffentlich in einem späteren Punkt auch auf Mazedonisch. Und jetzt das Lesen. Der, der verlorene Spiegel der Seele. The Lost Mirror of the Soul. Chapter 1. The Burning of the Books. What a blasphemy. That's pure heresy, pondered Bishop Guido as soon as he re read that section of the mirror. When he noticed that there was, were sections in this book where the author directly, without any feelings of shame whatsoever, addressed the church by sharing advice on what constitutes true faith and what the Holy Trinity is all about, that's when it darkness befell his eyes. With his feeble knowledge of the French vernacular, the straightforward addressing of Marguerite called the Beguin towards the church seemed like an outrageousness to him. He wasn't interested in what was behind those sentences. Burn her, he proclaimed with an incredibly cold rigor as though he stabbed an invisible knife in the room in which Marguerite was being questioned by the priests. Suddenly, an overwhelming tension was created in the room. His fellow colleagues weren't used to such a direct and unreasonable decision by their otherwise reasonable bishop. For this woman to be put on a stage just because some heretic lines out of a book that wasn't going to leave Valenciennes anyway seemed as an excessively harsh decision. Right at the very next moment, cold-blooded as before, Guido of Colemezzo continued on. The book, find all the existing copies in the province of Valenciennes. Search every house, every cellar in the town and as far as the countryside, ask the lords and just save yourselves a bit of traveling. The country folks don't know how to read anyway. We have acquired the names of the authors, followers, other followers during the hearings. You can arrest them with the aim of collecting all the book samples which have been distributed in Valenciennes thus so far. If they wish to repent, you may redeem them. However, solely under the condition of surrendering all the mirrors they possess and reveal the secrets of the moment, of the movement. We shall burn, said the bishop 
with a slight interruption whilst reaching the final decision, a moment which seemed to last forever. We shall burn the book only. Bishop Guido's decision had to be enforced in front of the people, show them the witch and prepare the stake for the burning of the books. The beginning of the end. If Marguerite could believe that petty little earthly notion of existing which is bound by a beginning and by an end. In his infinity. One always commits a vast amount of effort just to confirm what one already knows. What one already knows is that the soul is capable of embodiment and can leave the body. What one already knows is that the soul can begin and can finish. But the man knows not not how to immerse himself into the endless in-between. The regular man who is trapped in flesh finds it hard to contemplate, to stop and to quit because he doesn't know how. Maddened by fear, banished by the inquisition of court which knows not of mercy, banished from heaven, hungry and shivering, hungry and violent, hungry and thirsty. A man knows nothing of punishment or reward. Nothing else. Marguerite, who flourished out of his mercy, loves to hug this ignorant, scared, petrified man before the end which is inevitable anyway and equally terrifying as the beginning. That was the reason why she wrote the mirror. For him, for the uneducated man, to give him courage to show him the way. The way to mercy. That noon, when Marguerite was taken out of the Valenciennes main city square in front of the people, she didn't feel any anxiety whatsoever. For her, it was the beginning of the end which meant a blessing. Although the crowd didn't know what kind of punishment was about to unfold, for Marguerite it was only a sad chapter of a story of which she knew the end beforehand. The only thing she didn't know was the face from her vision that appeared in her cell last night during her deeper prayer. Marguerite caught a glimpse at an angel who appeared just to let her know that he was there to protect her and her message, to protect her mirror from breaking apart. Thank you very much. This was only a short section of the first chapter of my first novel, The Lost Mirror of the Souls. It's a historical novel and it's not published yet. If you're interested in donating for our work, for our translations and so on, please visit our website www.lucify.ch slash community writers. You can donate and help in our work, which is not easy when one lives in, for abroad. Thank you very much for your attention. Keep um, uh, bleib auf dem Laufenden. Nächsten Montag wird meine Kollegin Sacher Aljamus ihr äh, Teil von ihr ersten Roman vorlesen und nachher kommt noch Anna Buten. Äh, wir alle drei werden unser Schreiben äh, auf dem literarischen Matinee am 30. Mai in Thun im Rathaus äh, präsentieren. Ihr seid alle herzlich eingeladen. Vielen Dank für eure Aufmerksamkeit und ich wünsche euch einen schönen Tag.